reading this morning is taken from John chapter 20, starting at verse 1, and you can find that on page 1028 of the Church Bibles. That's John chapter 20, starting at verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped round Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Madeline went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, very happy Easter to you. It's great to see you. Um, If you're a visitor here today, my name is Rick, and I'm the rector of the church. So it's great to be able to welcome you. Now, we have some things for the threes and overs, which is something which you can do during the next few minutes. So if you'd like to come to Ed, um, who's wearing the check shirt, just here at the front on the right-hand side, come and collect something from him. If you're three or over, um, do go and um, collect something from him. And I'm just going to look for a stand. Now, what I want to um, think about today, as that's going on, and there'll be stuff for the children um, in and out of uh, what I'm saying, so please don't worry about the noise levels and volume levels. We're totally fine with that. I want to talk today about breaking news. Breaking news. Um, there's a newspaper group just down the road, News of the World, and they lost their News of the World, um, New, News International. They lost their paper, News of the World. So I have created a new newspaper group called News of the Word. Here it is. There we go. Fantastic. Thank you. Let's have a little round of applause for the new newspaper. Um, now, the News of the Word today, there's breaking news. So there's a lot of, actually, some wonderful things. We, we're, I'm going to talk about Easter in a minute. But we do have some family news in that um, for those of you who are members of the church, Charlie Lang and Katie Hodd have got engaged. <laughs> take a stand. Go on, take a stand. <laughs> now, um, for those who don't know them, 
they are long-term friends and members of the church, and um, they're long-term friends of each other, and they've finally got it together after many years, so we are very excited. (laughs) So um, that is obviously great news, but the best news ever, the best news ever in the whole world is the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And I just want to look at four items of breaking news today to help us to remember why it's so important. The first thing is break out. Break out from the tomb. Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday. He was put into a tomb. He was buried and a big stone was rolled in front of that tomb entrance. Now, from the outside, no one could get in because there was a Roman imperial guard guarding the tomb. They'd put a seal on it. It was impossible to break through without um, the whole of the Roman army basically saying, stop, so, um, and kind of getting through that. So it's impossible to get in from the outside. Um, but what about from the inside? Well, some people say, oh, Jesus just fainted on the cross, and uh, he was trying to get out, and actually, in the cool of the tomb, he, he actually awakened. And I just want to just um, think about that a little bit. So, um, you know, if there was, if the, the stone that was rolled in front of the entrance was made of paper, yeah, I think we could get through that, couldn't we? So let's just see, um, Toby, just punch your way through that. Come on. There we go. Okay. Big clap. So um, paper's pretty easy to knock through. Let's see a little bit of cardboard here. Cardboard, cardboard box, empty. Someone a bit stronger, Rod. <laughs> you see, you, you probably won't be able to because I've stiffened it, but go on, just try. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, everyone. Okay, so a cardboard one with someone the strength of Rod who works out every morning, every evening. Now, um, but actually, we know that it was a stone. So, can I have a volunteer, please? <laughs> Who'd um, like to try and just punch through, try and move? Any volunteers? I mean, actually, there's some karate experts who can do quite good stones, but actually, they usually do breeze blocks. This is solid stone. The stone that was rolled in front of the tomb was probably 50 times this size and weight. Okay? Just a little bit of maths. So, um, I, it's quite... Um, I do a little bit of working out, and uh, it's, quite, um, it's quite heavy. Um, I think I'd just like to say that's pretty difficult to knock through. When Jesus had been flogged, he'd been, um, he was uh, kind of in a, you know, they thought he was dead, and if, if people thought, okay, this is one of the things people said, oh no, he just revived and then pushed his way out of the tomb, rolled this stone away on his own, and went to the disciples and said, here I am, I'm alive. But actually, that's preposterous, even just that, and just thinking it through. There's an amazing little bit of scripture that says that one of the Roman soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, and out of his side flowed blood and water, separate. That's a sign of death. If the Roman soldiers had not assured um, the, their authorities that he was dead, they would have really come um, into, or they would have been executed themselves. He was definitely dead. The words are recorded in the scriptures. So the Bible's clear. He was dead in that tomb. But Jesus didn't stay dead. Jesus rose from the dead. That stone was rolled away. And Jesus appeared to Mary. He appeared to the other disciples. He appeared to more than 500 people at one time that was recorded. People thought that death was the end. People thought that Jesus' life was finished. People thought that the love that he poured out was just a waste of time. Just for them, that life. But love wins. If you want to know God, you can know him through Jesus, because Jesus is alive. He broke out from the tomb. Second breaking news is he broke through into history. If you think about our history, the most extraordinary event in the history of the whole world is that Jesus rose from the dead. How do we know that? Well, history itself has been divided into two. B.C., A.D. B.C. means before Christ. A.D. means Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. If you've ever looked at a a calendar, a calendar has got dates on it. The year is 2012. That was dated from the birth of Christ. 
AD, history has been broken in two by Jesus Christ. He is the most important person in all history. You can think of history as his story. The story of Jesus. The story of the Bible. The story of, of the beginning, of the, of the now, of the future. It's a story about God. It's a story about us. It's a story about Jesus. It's a story about finding our way back to God. The Bible tells us what Jesus said, what he did. The resurrection, Jesus rising from the dead, shows us that everything Jesus said about himself is true. Dead men don't rise. But Jesus rose from the dead. If he'd stayed dead in the tomb, how would we know that the words of God, the words that God loves us, are true? But he didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. That's how we know this is true. He broke through into history. Love wins again. And God can be trusted. Break out, break through. Thirdly, break in. Break into our lives. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm sometimes a little bit hard-shelled, thick-skinned. Do you know when um, you're a bit fed up, you're a bit stubborn, you just want to push people away, I'm going to do things my way and I don't care what you think. Do you, do you ever... Oh, you're, you're not like that at all, are you? You never feel like that. I mean, I'm, it just kind of makes me think. Um, I've got this... Uh, did you get one of these this morning? If, um, if you've never been here before, you don't know that I absolutely love chocolate. And so this is a very nice Waitrose egg that actually I bought for myself on, uh, um, yesterday. And think about, you know, the, our lives are a bit like this egg. Hard-shelled sometimes. You know, we um, want to push people away. We want to push... We just want to kind of keep things out. Sometimes we don't even want that, but that's what happens. We find ourselves rejecting other people. Actually, a lot of the time... I know what you want. A lot of the time we find ourselves actually doing that with God. We push God away. But the extraordinary thing is that when we begin to open our lives up to God, when we say, God, actually, I want you to come and touch my life. Try and get this out. I have prepared something already with this, just so you know. So. And keep that intact. Don't watch. <laughs> Our lives are a bit like this, hard-shelled. There's this extraordinary verse in the Bible. It's a verse that Jesus speaks in the book of Revelation, written by his best friend John. And it says this, Here I am. I stand at the door, like the door of your life, and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them and they with me. It's the most amazing verse. It's a verse which is written to people actually who are Christians already. It's a daily thing that is an invitation to Jesus to come in. Now, for some people for the first time when they do that, well, everyone who does it for the first time will experience the most wonderful presence of God filling their lives. That's one of the things which we're doing today is um, celebrating baptism, entry into God's church. People welcoming either by the promises of their parents or by um, reaffirming the, the, the promises they made themselves. Actually say, yes, Jesus, I want you to come into my life or into this child's life. But it's a bit like, you know, there's, something, there's an action on us. We need to open our lives up. We need to say, Jesus, I, I need you to come into my life. And he pours in his love into our hearts. It's the most amazing thing when especially when it's chocolate, um, when he pours into our lives every day, this is something each one of us can do each day to say, Jesus, I need you. I can hear you standing at the door of my life today, knocking. When we start the day with God, actually it changes everything. When we start the day saying, Jesus, I need you, I need to recognize that actually you are God and I'm me, then actually we have 
a totally different perspective on our lives. We have a security in who we are. We know that we are in need of God. We know that we're forgiven. We know that we, um, actually, we couldn't do anything without him. And of course, from that point, then we, we can be generous. We can be generous to others. We can start to give the love that we've received and give it away, which is rather good on Easter because there's lots of things to be able to... Oh, yes, the choir wants some. <laughs> Catch. <laughs> Heads. <laughs> Heads. <laughs> mind, mind your faces. Because God is a generous God and when he pours his life and his love into our own hearts, it means that we can give it away to others. We can give away the love that we've received. There's more coming later on, just so you know that, okay. There's more coming. There's more coming. Okay. Come on. You got them. There's plenty for everyone. That's the thing about the kingdom of God. There's plenty for everyone. It's just an amazing sign of the blessing of God that there is always plenty for everyone. There's more. So if you missed out, which I won. Okay. There we go. Breaking into our lives. That's what God wants to do every day. And that's what he can do when we open our lives up to God. He will transform us. He will fill us with a love that gives us a new security. You don't need to worry about the future. You don't need to worry about what's going to come at you. You don't need to worry about what people think about you. You don't need to be concerned about where your life's heading because God is in charge when he's in your life. It turns everything around. Love wins. Breaking out from the tomb. Breaking through into history. Breaking into our lives. Lastly, breaking bread. One of the most extraordinary things, we're just about to do this, is something that Jesus started on Maundy Thursday. He had supper with his closest friends. And he broke bread and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Whenever you break it, in this kind of context, you do it in remembrance of me. He said, with a cup of wine, he said, take this. This is my blood of a new covenant, a new relationship between us and God. So whenever you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. So this breaking news is that God has given us a new way of relating, that is together, that is people surrounding um, the table, if you like, of God's love with um, our need of God. Receiving and eating and sharing Jesus' body and his blood. And it's when we're filled with those things, again, that we are renewed inside. It makes a difference with the whole of our lives. Breaking bread. So we're going to do that in a couple of minutes. Ed, where are we at with... Um, the things which are being done, we can just, we can go, can we? Uh, well, they can keep, uh, if you keep hold of those, that's good. Why don't you hold up, have you been working on something? Can you hold up what you've been, what you've got? Just give it a wave, those people who've been doing things. That's fantastic. Well done for that. You've been amazing. There will be more to receive um, in a few minutes' time of a chocolate variety. But would you like to stand as we come to... Share the body and blood of Christ.